The Galactic Federation had always been strictly hierarchical. Strong species were adorned with the respect and materials of the lesser members, and their word held more political weight the higher up the social food chain they were. The Federation knitted a colourful web of lies to each newly discovered species. Promises of upliftment, democracy, and equally fitted every carefully chosen word they spoke during first contact. But after the last stroke that the new species marked on the Federation's misleading contract, the entire facade would crumble pitifully. While not officially named or spoken of, the rank of each species dictated their allies, trades and power over decisions made within the Federation. Everyone, regardless of their strength, got to vote, but the fear of backlash by the ones of a higher rank kept the polling results in favour of the top species. Again, while not officially named, we all knew who ran the show. We all knew of the three superpowers that no one dared question. The Gualums. Palifins and Surix stood at the top of the list in terms of power, status and might, and each one of them was just as merciless as the last when it came to making sure the entire Federation knew it. The Gualums entered the Galactic Federation in its early years, and so they became the first of the Big Three to have a chokehold over the other members. Their scorched red scales that ran down their back, accompanied by the misplaced black glazed eyes melted across their body, was a truly repulsive sight to behold. Even so, no one could afford to distance themselves from them. The Gualums, while ugly, were light years ahead in terms of technology. The Galactic Federation only consisted of a mere 20 species during that time, with each of them only having made the jump to FTL travel in the last decade. Having found other terrestrial sapiens species quickly due to their close proximity, no one really had any technological edge over another. Well, except the Gualums, of course. The Gualums, having always been hyper-industrial, found that they not only had a head start over everyone else, but that with this came incredible power. The entire Federation begged and gave whatever they could for a sliver of the Gualums' inventions. To ensure that this would continue, the Gualums would periodically sell their old, outdated creations to the other members, who were so far behind them in terms of technology that the absurd prices would not deter them. Even for blueprints which were pitiful, in comparison to new Gualum inventory. And so, even after the Palafins and Sorix joined the Federation, the standing of the Gualums did not waver for even a moment. The Palafins were the second of the Big Three to join the Galactic Federation. By then, the Federation had existed long enough to have a firm and stable military, which looked straight out of an engineer's fever dream. So with some newfound confidence, and the newest Gualum tech, the first expansion into the wider universe began, in order to find resources that were quickly running out. Not a single week had passed before stingy, territorial threats were flung anonymously to the exploration fleet. The fleet, not looking to cause a war with whatever species was hailing them, simply turned around and decided to explore in the opposite direction of the Endless Universe. Well, that was until the same threats came back. Dumbfounded, the Federation sent requests for a meeting out to the areas they had been contacted in, I managed to set a negotiation date with the mysterious species. It was in this meeting that they learned of the Palafin's existence, and the fact that this 6,000 year old species had already laid claim to half of the observable galaxy. The blue skinned bipeds wore ornate gems all along their forearms, with more prestigious members of the species carving gold and silver into their flesh in unique spirals. It was quickly apparent that their love for money exceeded their love for anything else and their appearance was a testimony to that greedy culture. No matter in which direction the Federation looked, all that could be seen was promises of fees for entry, travel through and landing on any celestial body or area claimed by the Palafin flag. The sheer amount of materials and resources that were branded under the Palafin's name made it immediately clear that the Palafins would control the economy, and they did. Still do. The Gualum surprisingly managed to satiate their need for resources, with an exclusive deal with the Palafins, where they would give early access to their technology blueprints at a lower price in exchange for raw materials. So, with the Gualum's blessings, the Federation gained their newest, greediest member. Just recently, the Sorex joined the Galactic Federation, completing the powerful triangle. Unlike the Palafins, they were a young species, and unlike the Gualums, they were an unintelligent species. But for what they lacked in experience or smarts, they made up for in pure physical strength. The brutality of the Surix was immediately put on display during first contact. 
The streams of blood and strung up guts were captured eloquently by drones the Federation sent after the first contact team went offline, as a reminder of the nature of the world's inhabitants. Naturally, every species in the Federation was appalled and afraid of the Sorik's might. Even the Gualum representatives had wept that day, thinking about how powerful the Sorik's would have had to have been to tear their brand new ship designs like they did. Due to this, when the Sorik's proclaimed that they were considering peace, the Federation threw themselves at their heel. It would have been better if the Sorik's were ignorant about their fiscal capabilities, but this was dreadfully not the case. Not only did the Sorik's know they were strong, they knew the other species were very, very weak in comparison. With many rounds of trading, and maybe a few threats, the Sorik's sat next to the Palafins and Gualums comfortably. Now, while these three species are known for their resounding strength, the Xanax, my species, are known for their resounding lack thereof. A single Sorik towers over three adult Xanax, even if they were to climb up onto each other. Physically, we are pitiful, and mentally, we are woefully average. When you are at the bottom of the food chain in the Federation, you will not last long. While we have been getting eyed by the Palafins and Gwalums as was, when the Soriks joined the Federation, we knew we were counting our days. So when our Xanak representative was cornered by the three superpowers and told the conditions of our species' basic survival, we were horrified but not surprised. The contract was even more depressing to look at. Cowlers were to be taken as slaves or conditional workers by the Gwalums, as they like to call them. Many more would be neglected to starve as our food was shuttled to Sorik military bases, and new taxes were sprinkled into the contract, which would triple the cost of living to feed the Palafins' ever-growing hunger for money. The other Federation members spared us harsh sympathetic glances and baseless optimism, but that was all. Of course, we were in no position to judge them. We would have done the same in their position. As we contemplated our limited choices of action, we heard wind of another species facing a similar fate. Apparently shortly after bullying us Xanax, the three superpowers then cast their predatory gaze on a much larger species. It was uncommon for mid rank species to be subject to this type of behaviour, but the sheer population of the humans in comparison to their strength meant they were just as, if not more vulnerable than even us. When the humans first joined, the entire federation was stunned at the estimated population of the species, let alone their expected population projection for the next century. The humans outnumbered the palafins to the point where there were 15 humans for every one palafin. Due to this, and their above average physical build with their strong arms and heightened endurance, humans took over the majority of labour work in the galaxy, and quickly rose to fame for their outstanding performance in such stressful lines of work. The Federation quickly warmed up to these bipeds and allowed them to slowly climb up the ranks peacefully, up until now. We would have felt pity for them had we not been grappling with our own demise as they did theirs. Even so, our representatives decided to hear out what they were planning to do, and take inspiration for them with our own predicament. When we finally worked up the courage to ask the humans how they will try to lessen the burden of the contract placed upon them, we were met with a confused stare. The contract is unacceptable, and so we will not accept it, they stated matter-of-factly. Taking this as an attempt at humour, our representatives chuckled slightly before asking the humans for what they really were going to do. When they were met with silence again, it became apparent that this species was delusional. Well, how'd you plan on fighting the Palafins and Gualums, let alone the Soriks, we mused. They did not answer, only promising us that they would strike, to quote their exact words. The humans had not even a considerable chance of holding back one of the big three, let alone all of them. They were physically gifted, sure, but they were like a match to a flame in comparison to the Soriks. They were mentally proficient, yes, but nowhere near the level of the Gwalums. And alright, they did have a thriving economy, but it would take seconds for the Palafins to sanction them into oblivion. What could these hellish apes possibly do? Within a matter of days, we got our answer. Every human, yes, all 150 billion of them, stopped showing up to work. At first, the Federation laughed at the pitiful show of rebellion, but after a month passed, no one was laughing anymore. Thriving Gualam companies have been raced to an astounding halt, to the extent that blueprints for inventions were piling up with no one to engineer or work machinery to make them. The hyper-industrial Gualums' blood ran cold at the sight of their inhabited worlds being reduced to what they were centuries ago, without the humans to be the backbone for their continued progression. The Palafins wept as their trading lines were cut off, 
They were left standing on a pile of resources, with no way to get it off their worlds, without human pilots and manual workers to ship the materials. Their grip on the galactic economy faltered and fell, and for the first time since their introduction to the Federation, the cost of goods became actually affordable. The Sorex did not know what to do. They needed Gualum technology to further their conquests, and they needed Palafin bribe money to keep their society mostly civil. So they did all that they could. They threatened military action to the human representative. The human just shrugged and stated that this was not a human government retaliation, but rather a coordinated strike from individuals, and that there was nothing he could do. Even today, I can't seem to forget the sick smile the human representative adorned as he was killed. He knew he had won. Just three months after the humans stopped working, all three superpowers begged them for mercy. With the heads of the Federation falling to their knees, the members of the Federation looked at the humans as their superior. But instead of taking up the top rank of the Federation, the humans stripped the system altogether. When we asked the human representative why their species gave up ultimate galactic power, after going against all three superpower species, he just smiled and said, Yeah, well, we're just not about all that. <laughs>